One of the UK's most striking examples of post-war building, St. Peter's Seminary, just outside of Glasgow, has lain unused and derelict for nearly 20 years now. As the weeds grow around the concrete walls, plan after plan has been hatched to try and save it, all unsuccessful. However, developers say that this latest scheme offers the last chance to stop the building going into total ruin. However, one of the original architects has told us that the plans are flawed and they need to go back to the drawing board. Our reporter Shelley Joffrey untangles the long-running story of Scotland's modernist ruin. Nestling in 200 acres of woodland near the village of Cardross is a hidden gem of modernist architecture. St Peter's Seminary was purpose-built in 1966 for the Catholic Church to train its priests. It was a revolutionary design that one local minister remembers fondly. I was just so excited by the building, its use of space. I mean, it was absolutely pioneering. It created a new feeling of space. And the chapel it was a wonderful place of worship. Some thought that the style was so radical that it was ugly. I've heard people call it a monstrosity. Certainly, 40 years on, St. Peter's has lost much of its shine through neglect and vandalism. But even in today's sorry state, the building is still an inspiration for some. It really sings of the optimism of the 1960s to me, and uh, if you look at it as a piece of architecture, it's the best that you could get of modernism in Scotland. It's extremely well put together, well thought out, well planned but done with a certain humanity. Love it or hate it, St Peter's is a stunning building, but it was plagued with problems from day one. The size of the place for a start made it a nightmare to heat and to maintain. One of the priests who taught here said it was a brilliant building, but utterly useless. It was the falling number entering the priesthood combined with a change of policy about training them in seclusion that really signed the death knell for St Peter's. The college was forced to shut its doors just 14 years after it opened. It's lain empty ever since. The building was given the highest grade A listing 12 years ago, but even that has offered little protection. Now plans have been lodged to safeguard St Peter's. Effectively, the building would be stripped back to its concrete shell. This is how it would look if the rotting roof was removed and the curved plaster vaults on each floor were pulled out. Some feel it would be an act of architectural desecration. The proposals are quite radical in some ways and not, not respectful with regard to that building. If that was allowed, then the danger would be that developers develop an attitude thinking, oh, a 20th century listed building isn't as important as a, let's say, 18th century listed building. John Sheridan from the developer's Classical House says their plans offer the only realistic lifeline for St Peter's. By building luxury homes on the adjacent land, they'll generate £2 million to spend on securing the building and restoring the whole estate. The important thing is to give this building a chance is to hold it, to, to freeze it and stabilise it and resolve as many problems as possible so the building at least has a chance for the future. If that isn't done, what's the alternative? The St Peter's Trust initially supported the developer's plans. The Trust was set up recently in the hope they could find a new use for the building once the work was done. But now that they've examined the detail, they've withdrawn their support. Current proposals are really pretty technical response to the problem of health and safety. They're not a creative response, which isn't really an approach you should take to an A-listed building. Is it absolutely necessary to take these down? I mean, wouldn't the whole character of the building be lost? I can't provide an answer for that. Technically, as you can see, I mean, this is a prime example, they are a very light structure. Eventually, somebody's going to get killed falling through one of these. There's no doubt that something needs to be done to halt the decline of this building, but even one of the original architects has condemned the current plans. We were asked to design a training college it's a building that gives you a lot of pain to think about, you know. I mean, you brought it into being and 
how you're being asked how it should be buried. I mean, the whole story of that building really was about the views you got through and, and the special way the staircase went up. So if they take all of these vaults out, what do you think that does to the, the, the light and the space in the building? Well, there's no building left. I mean, that isn't a building. There has to be a better way of, of making use of, of what's there. We, we've actually destroyed a building that was worthwhile. Could we not leave something worthwhile behind? The problem is there's no queue of generous benefactors lining up to transform this dilapidated building. And there's very little public passion for 60s concrete ruins at the moment either. But times change, and so might enthusiasm for St Peter's. It seems to take two to three generations for people to actually warm up to architecture. And I think it doesn't help that the building is very run down and um, has been vandalised a lot. But the qualities of the building, I think, are recognised within the architectural community. The Culture Show has learned that both the 20th Century Society and the St Peter's Trust have lodged objections to the planning application. They are now calling for a competition to encourage architects to come up with a more imaginative vision. An art gallery or a music venue are among the ambitious ideas being proposed. Do you think you're being realistic? We possibly are being a bit idealistic. It's worth being idealistic and hopefully people in a hundred years time might help you know, thank us for it. But time is running out for idealism. The planning committee will decide in the new year whether to reject the proposals. If it does, the developer may just walk away and this modernist gem could face an even more uncertain future. Shelley Joffrey reporting.